Hello, I'm Michael Bartz, a certified registered nurse anesthetist and an associate of the American Academy of Pain Management. I'm presenting this hour of instruction for CRNA today. This subject titled, Obstetric Anesthesia, Foundation Principles or Safe Practice, has many objectives. Important physiologic changes in pregnancy include oxygen consumption increases 30 to 60 percent, CO2 production rises due to added metabolism, tidal volume increases 45 percent, decrease in inspiratory and expiratory reserve volume, there is a commensurate reduction of functional reserve capacity, the diaphragm rises with the growing baby in uterus, minute ventilation rises, the epidural space is an area between the dura and the posterior longitudinal ligament. The epidural space borders the dural sac and contains epidural veins and loose fatty tissue. The compliance of those structures within and next to the epidural space are affected by the relative volume of the sac and the veins. The gravid uterus increases venous pressure in the vertebral plexus and distends the lumbar veins. This is a The elements of informed consent for neuraxial service for labor and delivery seem to be decided by a number of factors. Some anesthesia service providers recite and are prepared to discuss only a few problems that might happen. Researchers of many separate studies that looked at the role of informed consent in this field have used 6 to 12 separate risks depending on which study is cited. The specific number and which specifically you decide to use and be prepared to discuss is up to you and in common practice is often, but not, ref but not recommended, changed to a lower number for sake of brevity and time. In the course of anesthesia practice on a busy labor and delivery unit, you might go over your list over a dozen times in one work stint. So it makes sense to develop a basic but malleable script to facilitate this important communication. It is a good idea to try to customize the informed consent discussion to each patient and her needs and the needs of the family members, but we should always provide a clear picture of the serious side of the service we propose to deliver. This will go a long way to properly calibrate patient expectations of our service, no matter how non-eventful or rocky the labor and delivery experience unfolds. It is important to note here that a significant portion of all studied popula populations could not precisely remember a significant number of all the details of informed consent, regardless of the specific outcome details of labor and delivery. Because of the issues like this, significant numbers of anesthesia providers in certain Western nations in this field of service don't even obtain a written consent from their laboring patients prior to performing a neuraxial procedure. But it seems prudent to accept that it is better to discuss as many potential problems and their solutions and their statistical chance of them actually occur in your practice as is reasonably feasible. And in the USA, it is also most often the case that a separate written informed consent is obtained by the anesthesia provider. I have provided in this slide all the risk complications that were listed in the text Evidence-Based Obstetric Anesthesia in the chapter entitled Consent for Obstetric Analgesia and Anesthesia. Naturally, as oft noted, there simply is no way to completely cover this topic. Only ways to confer inf importance to the topic of conformed consent for neuraxial labor and delivery service. So that wraps up this continuing education module on obstetric 
anesthesia. Thank you for your time and attention. I hope that you have enjoyed this presentation. To get complete credit, you need to proceed to the post-test portion of this module. After you close this window, if you click on the Exit Activity link in the upper right portion of your screen, you'll be directed back to the course homepage for the obstetric anesthetic. Also, be sure to fill out the evaluation form. Upon successful completion of the post-test, you'll be able to print a certificate. If you have any questions, you can contact me at montanum at itstriangle.com. Thank you again for taking part in this continuing education module here at CRNA Today.